Before we get started, a friendly reminder that my videos are not for children. I curse a lot and I make a lot of sexual jokes and this video is no exception. Alright, on to the video. What's up fuckers? My name is Alexander Hamilton. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my very first doll customizing video! I'm super excited for this video. This is gonna be such a cool project. If you've never heard of doll customizing before, it's pretty self-explanatory. You take a doll and you make a custom piece of artwork out of it. This is not my first custom project. I have made two previous dolls, which you can see on screen right now. And there are two unfinished projects currently sitting in my living room waiting to be completed. I'll go into detail on those in a future video. Um, before we get started with this project though, I had a few technical mishaps while editing this video. I lost a lot of footage and a lot of it somehow got damaged when importing so it looks really weird and laggy. Here's a fun drinking game. Take a shot every time I say, I lost the footage of this. Also, the order I describe my process in this video is not the order that I did it in. I jump around a lot when doing doll projects. Like, I work on one part, and then while that part is drying or curing, I move on to the next part. I've rearranged the order that I did things in just to make this video easier to follow along, so please excuse the lack of continuity. Okay, let's get to today's project! This is actually going to be the first in a series of doll custom video. It was you write the title. Well, inspired by this incredible hu human's video drawing pride flag witches, we're making pride flag mermaids! We're starting with the L in LGBT and making a lesbian mermaid. Starting with the concept art, I wanted each doll to have a color scheme that matched their flag, but the lesbian flag has some complicated origins. This is the original lesbian flag, and it's more than a little problematic. The person who made this flag is not only incredibly racist, she doesn't include masculine lesbians for some stupid reason, and on top of that, she's a TERF, and if you don't know what TERF means, it stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. Basically, it's a group of cunts, I mean, uh, people, who believe that, that trans women are just men who want to pretend to be women to harass and assault, in their stupid opinion, real women. And trans men are just women who are afraid to be women because of trauma. Now, as a trans person, I would personally love it if all terms were prescribed and a healthy dose of cyanide. On top of that, the stripes in a pride flag usually have significance, each color having a meaning. Not with this one, she just chose the colors because they're the color of lipstick, and it's just generally poorly designed. Since this flag is problematic, to say the least, a lot of other people have made different versions of the lesbian flag, and there are a lot of them. There were so many different flags to choose from, but in the end, I went with this one. With the color scheme mostly being magenta and reddish orange with a little bit of white. Okay, with that huge disclaimer out of the way, let's actually look at the concept art. I'm not the best at drawing, but I have this really fun and cool app on my phone called Monster Girl Maker, not sponsored, I just really like this app. That's a great tool for making faces and hairstyles. So I use Monster Girl Maker not just for this doll, but all the dolls in this series. I wanted her to look somewhere between girly and a bit more rough and tumble. Like, she really enjoys makeup and fashion, but she also plays, like, three sports. Her style is like a middle ground between femme and butch. Alright, let's get started. I had already started working on this project before I decided to make it into a video, so here's where we are. Her body is a Barbie-style swappin' fashionista doll, not entirely sure which one, I think it's sporty? And her head is a Monster High Laguna Fire head from the Freaky Fusion line. I had already removed Laguna Fire's hair and factory painted face and Sporty's head, legs, leg joints, and sanded off the molded on underwear. I originally tried to modify her legs just because I really hate the proportions of Barbie's legs. Like, look at them. Her knees look really weirdly low on her leg, her thighs look way too long, long and her calves look way too short. They just look weird. I attempted to fix this, failed miserably, got very frustrated and said, you know what? Fuck it. I've been wanting to make a mermaid custom for a while. She's gonna be a mermaid because I am so done with dealing with these stupid things. Fuck off with you. Okay, moving on. Allow me to introduce you to my best friend throughout this project, this steak knife. This knife has been a stand-in for several other tools that I don't have. It's been in my saw, my drill, my carving tool, my sculpting tool, it's just been the best. I started by using this knife to drill a hole through her pelvis. 
This will be used to make the tail later on. The plastic was really, really hard for some reason. It took several days just to get through to the other side. This doll's bust is designed to be removable to easily swap styles with other dolls from this line, hence the name. I don't want her bust to be removable, so let's secure it in place, starting with hiding the seam. To do that, let's use Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part putty that cures into a solid plastic when mixed. It's like resin, but it's more clay-like instead of a liquid. I mix equal parts A and B, roll it into a snake, and place it along the seam between the pieces. I dip my finger into water to help smooth it. When putting epoxy on the edge, I move the arm around to make sure it's not obscuring the movement of the shoulder joint, then set it aside to cure for 24 hours. After that, I move on to removing the button on her back. At first I tried just popping off the button, but I couldn't get my knife deep enough into the crevice to get enough leverage to pop it off. <laughs> that out of context. So I decided to just carve it off. I lost the footage of it, but I used my knife to drill a hole in the middle of the button, then carved off the rest of it, and filled in the hole with epoxy. I started sanding off the epoxy on her chest to make it blend seamlessly with the plastic body, but I accidentally sanded off way too much, and there was still a noticeable seam. And some of the epoxy had cracked from when I removed the button. So I gave up on it, sanded and carved off all the epoxy, then secured the bust piece using hot glue. Super glue would have worked better, but I didn't have any in the house at the time. I did buy some later on in the project. Before we do the rest of her mod, let's make her some clothes. Since her top is going to be skin tight, the accuracy of the pattern is really important, so I decided to use the masking tape method. I covered half of the doll's torso in masking tape, drew out the shape of her top, then remove the tape and cut out the shape I drew. The tape that was on the doll's bust is still curved in the shape of her boobs, so to flatten the pattern pieces, I cut from the top to the middle of the dome, roughly where her nipple would be if she had them. And that flattens it out. I stuck the tape patterns to a piece of paper, traced them, removed them, and cut them out. Now that we have our patterns, let's make her top. The fabric I used was this white, stretchy cotton jersey fabric, so t-shirt material. I actually salvaged this for making my prom outfit. I folded over enough to fit the pieces, pinned them on the fold, cut them out, sewed them right sides together. You can use a sewing machine if you want, but I prefer to hand sew doll clothes. The first top I made didn't really fit her the way I wanted to, so I adjusted the pattern, made another one, adjusted it again, made another one, adjustments, make another, adjustments, make another, over and over again for two full days, until I finally had one I was satisfied with. Strike me as a woman who has never been satisfied. Alright, let's move on to the body mods, starting with sculpting the gills on her neck. I place an oval shape on the side of her neck, blend out the edges, then using the tip of my knife, I remove the bottom of the epoxy blob to give it a sharp edge. I repeat the same thing on the other side of her neck, then once it's fully cured, I repeat the exact same thing on top of the first gill, then repeat it once more when the second layer cures. They're not perfectly symmetrical, but I have zero experience with sculpting, so they were never really gonna be. They don't look half bad, though. The next thing that needs to be sculpted are the fins on her arms. I mark her forearms and drill two holes through her arms. I stick a wire through, through the holes, form the fin shape, fill in the holes with epoxy, cover up the wires on the inside of the forearm, and fill in the fin. I kept the fin simple because I wanted her to look a little, <laughs> well, sporty, so I was able to do most of the sculpting in the first pass. Once everything is cured, it's time for sanding. This stuff can be really bad for your lungs, so make sure to wear a filtration mask. My first time using epoxy sculpt, I made the mistake of not wearing a mask, and the next day I had a sore throat so bad, I legitimately sounded like Beetlejuice. So yeah, wear a mask when sanding. Once everything's all smooth, it's time for paint. I tried my best to color match the doll's skin tone, but my mixture came out a little too pinkish and too light. It's not perfect, but I literally spent two goddamn hours on this, and it's close enough. Make sure to water down your paint so you can get a smooth finish with no brush strokes. I paint over the gills and bring the color all the way down to the bust piece so there isn't a harsh line. After that's dry, I highlight the edges of her gills with magenta. Lucky for me, I had a color straight out of the bottle that worked perfectly, so I didn't have to mix custom colors. I then painted the fins the same magenta. 
for her forearms, I didn't want to paint them the same color I mixed up because then the forearms would be a different color than her upper arm and that would look really weird. So instead, I mixed up a watered down reddish orange and painted it over the epoxy in, in an oval shape. Then once I've layered it up enough to be fully opaque, I paint a fish scale texture in bright red. It looks a little strange on its own, so I paint the same thing on her upper arms. The placement of these was actually inspired by Deuce Gorgon's arm scales. I decided to paint magenta scales over the epoxy on her back. It was only after this that I looked at the concept art and realized I painted her fins the wrong color. Oh well, it's too late now. Looks pretty good anyway. While I had the orange mixed up, I painted her crotch and butt area to match the color of her tail. I painted it following the natural curves of her anatomy instead of painting a straight line around her hips. I feel like it looks more natural that way. All the paint took about three to five layers to become fully opaque. Once everything's dry, I seal in the paint with matte varnish. Very carefully paint on thin layers. If the layers are too thick, it won't dry fully transparent. My varnish takes three hours to dry between coats, which makes it a little difficult to remember how many coats I've done, but I put three coats over most of the paint, six on the parts I know will get bumped or scratched more, and ten on the hip area because I know that'll be scraping against her tail. I don't want the paint to chip off, even though that's kind of inevitable. The last thing that her torso needs is her butterfly chest tattoo. I lost most of the footage of drawing this, but here's my best recreation of my process. Just imagine that this is being drawn on boobs instead of paper. I take a tiny piece of paper that's roughly the same size as the area of the doll I'll be drawing on, and fold it in half lengthwise. I draw out the shape of the butterfly, cut it out, hold it against the doll's chest, and trace it with a black watercolor pencil to get a symmetrical butterfly. I then drew on the line work while referencing the concept art. I didn't make it exactly the same because I didn't think I could get that much detail on such a small scale. So this was as far as I could get with the matte varnish. To seal in the pencil and build up more color, I sprayed the chest with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Matte Sealant. This stuff is super toxic, so remember to wear a filtration mask or this stuff will fuck up your lungs. From there, I darken the lines and add shading. I think it took about four layers before I got something I'm fully satisfied with. You strike me as a woman who has never been satisfied. I've already made that joke, I'm repeating myself. Shifting to her head, I started painting the head when I realized that I had completely forgotten about her ears and the gills on her face. I considered leaving her ears as is because they match the concept art pretty closely, but you can barely see them from the front, and in the concept art the ears are pretty far out to the side, and a pretty prominent part of her silhouette. Instead of cutting them off and sculpting them from scratch, I carefully cut around the ear, stuck a needle through her head to hold them in place farther out to the side, and filled in the gap with epoxy. I then sculpted the gills on her face the exact same way I sculpted the ones on her neck. Once again, not perfectly symmetrical, but with my level of experience, they were never gonna be, and they still look pretty cool. After another round of sanding, I paint the face the skin tone color I mixed up, her ears and the edges of her gills magenta, and her head light yellow in preparation for her blonde hair. My varnish tends to leave brush strokes, so to seal in the paint, I spray the head with the MSC. Once again, this stuff is straight up chemical death, so make sure to wear a filtration mask and wait 30 minutes between layers to let it fully cure or bad things will happen to your lungs. I'm warning you! I needed to spray the head with MSC anyway to give it some texture to be able to draw on the face. <clears throat> I start with three coats of MSC for my face ups. Some people only do one, some do eight or even more. It's all up to you. Before we give her a face, let's get to the most important part of a mermaid doll, her tail. To make her tail, I'm actually combining two methods I've seen two other customizers use. I considered making her a fabric tail because that would be pretty easy, but when I bent and posed the tail, the folds in the fabric would be very noticeable. So I decided to do something much more complicated, time consuming, and difficult, but will look much better in the end. I'm making a ball jointed tail! To do this, I'm mostly following the method Eliza from Moonlight Jewel used for her siren doll, but I've never used resin before and this doesn't seem like a beginner-friendly project, 
So instead of resin, I'm using a method similar to what Catherine from Delightful used for her dragon doll Aurora, making the pieces out of air dry clay with paint mixed into them to get the colors I want, without having to worry about paint chipping off them from the pieces rubbing together. I started by making a blueprint, which I, of course, lost the footage of, so here's my best attempt at recreating it. First, I take a piece of paper and fold it in half lengthwise. Then I take another Barbie doll I had, which ironically is also a mermaid, but she also has regular legs. Anyway, I lay her down on the paper and trace her legs. To make the shape for the hip joint, I take one of the legs I removed from my doll, well, part of her leg, and trace the joint. I then sketch out the shape of her fin while referencing images of dolphin flukes. Then I cut it out, trace it on a new sheet of paper, draw curved lines along the length of it to mark the size of the segment, label the colors, and then we're done and ready to start sculpting. I take my air dry clay and begin mixing paint into it. It takes a fuck ton of paint to get any saturation at all, but eventually I have all the colors I want. I decided to pre-mix the color so the segments that have to be the same color will be the exact same color. I keep them from drying out by wrapping them in plastic wrap and putting them into a sandwich bag. Take my dark orange color and make a U-shade that matches up with her pelvis, use a pencil to poke a hole through the bottom, then set it aside to fully dry. I did my best to create a functional yet minimal gap so the hip piece can move forward enough for her to sit down. After that, I add more clay onto the sides to build it up and make it larger and rounder. I was really paranoid about messing this up, so I let every piece fully dry before sculpting the next piece. This did make the sculpting this did make sculpting the tail take a really, really long time since each piece needed multiple days to fully dry. But like I said, I was really paranoid about messing this up. All the segments are basically fat crescent moon shapes with a hole through them, getting smaller and smaller towards the tip. Except for the last segment, which is basically a tiny pinch pot that's an oval on one end and a circle on the other. After each piece was dry, I took more clay in the same color and placed a thin layer over it to fill in the crack and smooth out the shape. To make the fin, I cut out the fin shape from the blueprint to use as a template, take this floor tile that we use as a cutting board just so I can have a flat, even surface, put a slab of clay on the tile, and I couldn't find my rolling pin, so I used this bottle of peach schnapps to roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thick, put the template on top, and cut it out with my knife. The ball joint needs to be strong, so this piece got an armature wire. I made the ball shape, carved a slot in the middle, and stick a thick sturdy wire through the clay, creating a hole that intersects with the slot. I initially made the ball joint out of air dry clay, but it was too weak and ended up breaking off later, and I had to sculpt a new ball joint out of epoxy sculpt. I should have seen this coming, the exact same thing happened in Catherine's video. I thought I might be able to use clay for the ball joint because I use a different clay, but I guess I thought wrong. After all the pieces are fully dry, it's time for... Sanding! Sanding, 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 sanding for days. No lie, I spent four days doing nothing but sanding. I start with a rough grain to take out the biggest lumps and smooth out the shape, then work my way down to finer and finer grains until everything is nice and smooth. After everything had been sanded, the pieces were covered in dust, which made the color lighter and it also made a mess because the dust got on everything it touched. They had to be rinsed off, but putting them in water rehydrates and softens the clay. I worked quickly, only putting the pieces under the water for a few seconds, immediately placing them down on a paper towel and not touching them until they're dry so I don't leave fingerprints on them. After the fin has been sanded smooth, 
seconds, I come back with more air dry clay to add some raised details to the sculpt. After that dried, I sanded it. Painted the outside parts magenta. The inside parts orange. and the parts in between a mix of the two. The color you see me using in this clip was actually too orange, so I had to add more magenta until I had a color that was more of a middle ground between the two. The clay took paint really well, only took two coats to be fully opaque. Everything is sculpted, so it's time to make the articulation. I make a wire hook with a loop on one end, and stick it in the slot. I take the same wire I used to make the hole in the ball joint, and cut a length that matches the width of it. I then stick the thicker wire through the hole, catching the loop at the end of the hook so it can move back and forth freely. I seal the thicker wire in place with super glue, and the ball joint is finished. To make the articulation, we need a thick elastic cord. By pure happy coincidence, the only elastic I could find at the craft store that was thick enough was rainbow. Yay! I heat seal the end of the elastic cord by carefully holding it up to a candle flame to gently melt it. Then I sew the end into a loop. I cut a long piece and repeat the same thing on the other end. I initially only made this piece to test if the wire hook could handle the tension of the elastic, but holding it up to the tail segments, it looks like I'll be able to use this to string together the tail. Lucky me. Start by putting the elastic cord through the pelvis hole, then thread a string through the two loops, and use that string to thread it through all the tail segments. Once all the segments have been strung onto the elastic, pull it through, catch the loops with the wire hook, remove the string, and you've got a ball jointed tail! My elastic piece was actually too long, so I had to remove the tail pieces, cut off one of the loops, sew a new one, restring it, and repeat until the elastic had enough tension. I love how the tail came out! It looks great, and it's really easy to move and pose. It probably doesn't look that impressive to you pro BJD sculptors out there, but please keep in mind, I have zero experience with sculpting, and this is only my third completed doll project, and I made a freaking FUNCTIONAL BALL JOINTED MERMAID TAIL?! I'm feeling like the shit right now. Uh, I love it so much, I'm so proud of this! Alright, we're done with her body, let's give her a face. I don't want to distort her face or crack the paint, so let's put her head back on first. But something I didn't account for when sculpting the gills is the thickness of her neck, so now I can't put her head back on. I very carefully widen her neck hole with my knife, very carefully, then put it on the doll. It's still a bit of a tight fit and her neck still looks a little weirdly long, but it's fine. It's fine. This is fine. Let's draw on her face now. I use Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. Faber? Faber? But you can use pretty much any watercolor pencils. Oil-based pencils can mess with MSC and won't hold up well in the long run. I started with a color close to her skin tone so any mistakes can be easily fixed. I mostly follow the mold, but feel free to draw new eye shapes if you want. You don't have to stick with what they give you. I draw out the shape of her eyeliner with a light brown pencil, draw on her waterline with light pink, and rough out the shape and placement of her iris with light blue. I kept her makeup fairly simple, with magenta lipstick and a little reddish-orange eyeshadow. I kept the eyeshadow thin, stopping at her eye crease. There was an indented line in the gills on the right side of her face. You can't see it that well on camera, but it was really obvious in real life, and it really bugged me. So using light pink and a little bit of red, I made it into a facial scar. I add white to her sclera, and then sketch her eyebrows on with a yellow-orange pencil. Eventually you'll get to a point where your pencil starts slipping and you can't build any more color. That's when you want to take her outside for another spray of sealant. It's like making a new layer in Photoshop. 
On the second layer, I go over the light brown on her eyeliner with black, but other than that, it's just building up saturation in the colors I had already laid out. I lost the footage of this, but no matter how much I sharpened my magenta pencil, I couldn't get it into her lip crease. I've seen other customizers wet a tiny paintbrush and use that to lift the pigment off the pencils and paint it on. So I did that, and I was able to really beef up the saturation in her lips, so I decided to do the same thing with her whole face. Doing this, I significantly increased the saturation of the colors. I sealed the face again, and started drawing on her pupils. Well, I tried to draw on her pupils, but all the pencils did was scratch off the sealant. It was really humid that day, and the weather really needs to be perfect for MSE to work properly, so I lifted the pigment off the pencil to add her pupils. I also added one more layer of color with this method, it used a dark brown pencil to give her freckles, sealed her again, and finished the face with watered down acrylic paint. What's the point of pencils if you're going to use acrylics in the end? Well, pencils are a bit easier for me to use, so I basically use them to create an easy to follow template. I mix up colors that match the pencils I use and paint over them. The only change I made was the eyebrows. The darker color just wasn't working. The camera's blowing out the saturation, but in real life, you could barely see them. I mixed up more of the same light yellow I used to paint her scalp and painted over her eyebrows. It took a couple attempts, but eventually I got a shape and color that I liked. But for some reason, I got to a point where painting a new layer of paint on the eyebrows was just taking off the lower layers. I busted out the pencils one last time to give her lower eyelashes with a couple of delicate flicks from a very sharp black pencil, and used my white pencil to add a few subtle highlights to her brow bone, cupid's bow, cheekbones, and the bridge of her nose. I also made her look like she's smiling by drawing the corners of her lips on slightly above where they are on the mold. I sealed her, added more saturation to her eyebrows and highlights, added a little shading by painting slightly colors in her lip crease and along the top of her eye, added the catch lights on her eyes, applied a final coat of sealant, and with that, her face is done! All that's left are the details. Let's make her face piercings. I couldn't find any pins in the right shade of magenta and orange, so I just decided to paint them. I also sealed them with MSC. I pre-poked some holes in her face with an unpainted pin and very carefully stuck them inside, which I, of course, lost the footage of. I attempted to give her 3D eyelashes, but every time I tried, the lashes peeled off when I tried to trim them down. After four attempts, I just said, fuck it, I'm done. Adding eyelashes is the most frustrating part of doll customizing, and every time, I fail, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong, it's just too much goddamn work for nothing. I'm just done. I'm fucking done! <sighs> All that's left is her hair. I made brushed acrylic yarn wefts using off-white and light yellow yarn to look like platinum blonde with lowlights. Uh, I learned this technique from Mozekito, so I'll leave links to her amazing wig tutorials in the description box below. The technique I'm using for my doll's hair I got from combining Mozekito's standard wig and Space Buttons wig tutorials. I drew guidelines on her head and got to work. I start with the part, glue a weft on backwards, and glue another weft on top of it. 
Then once the glue's dry, you can flip it over and you have a pretty finished part. I do the same thing along the back of her bangs. After the glue dries, I flip everything to the front and style it in place with a wet toothbrush. Yarn hair clumps together very easily, so water pretty much acts like hair gel. I ended up having to add a few more tiny pieces to make it look full. After I was done with half her bangs, I used a hair clip just to keep it in place and out of the way while I repeated the same thing on the other side of her bangs. Now it's time to make her bun! I glue wefts facing outward along her hairline and behind her bangs, then glue wefts over those facing inwards. After the glue dries, I pull it up into a high ponytail and secure it with a tiny elastic. I did this off camera because it was impossible to do with one hand, but I put the hair through the elastic, twisted it, and pulled it through. Just like you do with a human sized ponytail. I twisted it a third time, but this time I didn't pull it all the way through, giving me a loop of hair on the top of her head. I pull at the sides to shape it the way I want. Take the rest of her hair and wrap it around the base of the bun to hide the elastic, then secure everything in place by wetting it down with my finger. All that's left is to curl her bangs. Take a recycled plastic straw and cut two small sections to use as curlers. Wet the hair, wrap it around the straw, curling away from the face, secure the hair in place with bobby pins, and wait for it to fully dry. After that, just remove the pins and straws, and you have cute, bouncy ringlet curls. And with that, the doll is done! I asked you guys for name suggestions over on Instagram, shameless plug, and one of you guys suggested the name Lafayette, and she's French now. Just because of the mental image I got from that. She's a French mermaid, she has a French accent. You guys suggested some other great names and some very fitting French surnames. I narrowed it down to four of each that got suggested the most, or that I disliked the most, and put it up to a vote. I honestly expected Leslie to win because that name just kept getting suggested over and over and over again, but the winning name by a landslide was... Lafayette Bellarose. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make Lafayette here. Let me know down in the comments, well, if the comment section is even down there, what do you think of her? Are you excited for the other customs in the series? And what do you think of this new outro? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a fantastic day. Be gay, do crime. I love you. Bye. Mwah.